Welcome to Zero Trust Cyber Tips and Tricks. In today's video we will be talking about MITRE ATT and CK tactics and techniques. If you're in the cybersecurity field, you may have heard of this framework, but what exactly is it and how can it be used to improve your organization's security? In this video series, we'll give you an overview of what MITRE ATT and CK is and take a closer look at the tactics and techniques used by attackers. Introduction to MITRE Attack MITRE ATT and CK is a globally accessible knowledge base of adversary tactics and techniques based on real-world observations. The attack knowledge base is used as a foundation for the development of specific threat models and methodologies in the private sector, in government, and in the cybersecurity product and service community. MITRE ATT&CK, short for Adversarial Tactics, Techniques, and Common Knowledge, is a framework that provides a comprehensive understanding of the methods and tactics used by cyber attackers. The framework is organized into a matrix that includes different tactics on the vertical axis, such as initial access, execution, persistence, etc. Part 3. Understanding initial access. The adversary is trying to get into your network. Initial access consists of techniques that use various entry vectors to gain their initial foothold within a network. Techniques used to gain a foothold include targeted spear phishing and exploiting weaknesses on public-facing web servers. Footholds gained through initial access may allow for continued access, like valid accounts and use of external remote services, or may be limited use due to changing passwords. There are various techniques that can be used for initial access, these are some, of them. Drive by compromise. Adversaries may gain access to a system through a user visiting a website over the normal course of browsing. With this technique, the user's web browser is typically targeted for exploitation, but adversaries may also use compromised websites for non-exploitation behavior such as acquiring application access token. Exploit public-facing application. Adversaries may attempt to take advantage of a weakness in an internet-facing computer or program using software, data, or commands in order to cause unintended or unanticipated behavior. The weakness in the system can be a bug, a glitch, or a design vulnerability. These applications are often websites, but can include databases, like SQL, standard services, like SMB or SSH, network device administration and management protocols, like SNMP and Smart Install and any other applications with internet-accessible open sockets, such as web servers and related services. Depending on the flaw being exploited this may include exploitation for defense evasion. External remote services. Adversaries may leverage external-facing remote services to initially access and or persist within a network. Remote services such as VPNs, Citrix, and other access mechanisms allow users to connect to internal enterprise network resources from external locations. There are often remote service gateways that manage connections and credential authentication for these services. Services such as Windows Remote Management and VNC can also be used externally. Spear phishing attachment. Adversaries may send spear phishing emails with a malicious attachment in an attempt to gain access to victim systems. Spear phishing attachment is a specific variant of spear phishing. Spear phishing attachment is different from other forms of spear phishing in that it employs the use of malware attached to an email. All forms of spear phishing are electronically delivered social engineering targeted at a specific individual, company, or industry. In this scenario, adversaries attach a file to the spear phishing email and usually rely upon user execution to gain execution. Spear phishing may also involve social engineering techniques, such as posing as a trusted source. Replication through removable media. Adversaries may move onto systems, possibly those on disconnected or air-gapped networks, by copying malware to removable media and taking advantage of autorun features when the media is inserted into a system and executes. In the case of lateral movement, this may occur through modification of executable files stored on removable media or by copying malware and renaming it to look like a legitimate file to trick users into executing it on a separate system. In the case of initial access, this may occur through manual manipulation of the media, modification of systems used to initially format the media, or modification to the media's firmware itself. Compromise software supply chain. Adversaries may manipulate application software prior to receipt by a final consumer for the purpose of data or system compromise. Supply chain compromise of software can take place in a number of ways, including manipulation of the application source code, 
manipulation of the update, distribution mechanism for that software, or replacing compiled releases with a modified version. Trusted relationship. Adversaries may breach or otherwise leverage organizations who have access to intended victims. Access through trusted third-party relationship abuses an existing connection that may not be protected or receives less scrutiny than standard mechanisms of gaining access to a network. Default accounts. Adversaries may obtain and abuse credentials of a default account as a means of gaining initial access, persistence, privilege escalation, or defense evasion. Default accounts are those that are built into an OS, such as the guest or administrator accounts on Windows systems. Default accounts also include default factory provider set accounts on other types of systems, software, or devices, including the root user account in AWS and the default service account in Kubernetes. Domain accounts. Adversaries may obtain and abuse credentials of a domain account as a means of gaining initial access, persistence, privilege escalation, or defense evasion. Domain accounts are those managed by Active Directory domain services where access and permissions are configured across systems and services that are part of that domain. Domain accounts can cover users, administrators, and services. Cloud accounts. Adversaries may obtain and abuse credentials of a cloud account as a means of gaining initial access, persistence, privilege escalation, or defense evasion. Cloud accounts are those created and configured by an organization for use by users, remote support, services, or for administration of resources within a cloud service provider or SaaS application. In some cases, cloud accounts may be federated with traditional identity management system, such as Window Active Directory. Preventions and mitigations for initial access attack, includes. 1. Implementing strong authentication and access controls, such as multi-factor authentication and least privilege access, to limit access to sensitive systems and data. 2. Regularly patching and updating software and systems to address known vulnerabilities. 3. Implementing network segmentation and isolation to limit the spread of an attack. 4. Implementing firewalls, intrusion detection and prevention systems, and other security technologies to monitor and block unauthorized access attempts. 5. Implementing a vulnerability management program to identify, assess, and mitigate vulnerabilities in systems and networks. 6. Regularly monitoring and analyzing network traffic for suspicious activity. 7. Regularly reviewing and managing user accounts, including disabling or removing accounts of employees who have left the organization. 8. Educating employees about the importance of security and the risks of phishing and social engineering attacks. 9. Implementing security awareness and training program for employees. 10. Having an incident response plan in place and regularly testing it to ensure readiness in case of any attack. Preventing initial access is critical to protecting an organization from a successful cyber attack. Organizations should continuously monitor and update their security controls and procedures to address new and emerging threats. I in some cases, the attacker may already have initial access to the network, either through prior compromise or through a privileged insider. MITRE ATT and CK framework provides a comprehensive understanding of the techniques and methods used by attackers to gain initial access and can help organizations to identify potential vulnerabilities and implement countermeasures to prevent initial access. For more information about initial access go to MITRE website at https colon slash slash attack.mitre.org. In the next video we will be talking about MITRE attack execution. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to my channel for more cybersecurity tips and tricks.